How many USBs are too many USBs? If you're anything like me, then it's a trick question as you can never have too many USBs. Now, most motherboards these days come with only six USB slots, maybe seven to eight if you're lucky. But given the amount of peripherals we hook in these days, the amount we get is nowhere near enough. Even for someone like me, you have your mouse, a mechanical keyboard that takes in two USB slots, an external USB DAC amp, a webcam, an Xbox 360 wireless controller, a card reader, and my Samsung studio microphone. Not including the other USB cables to hook in stuff like phones and USB sticks. That's about eight devices already. I also like a clean minimalistic outlook so I don't like flooding the front panel with permanent USB devices or using USB hubs. This is where this guy steps in. Welcome to episode 4 of Tech from the Far East and this is the Oracle 7 port USB 3.0 5 gigabits per second PCI Express card. As usual, a quick unbox to see what we get inside. My box came a little squashed, but nothing is damaged on inside, so that's great. Pulling the box open, you get the 7 port PCI Express card, a 4 pin Molex to SATA power cable, a user manual in English, a little thank you card, and a few screws to secure them into your chassis. Nice thing about this product is that it comes with a black PCB and not an unsightly green or blue one. Not just the PCB though, the bracket is also black, which is a nice touch from Oracle, though the USB ports are still blue. I don't mind though, still gets my thumbs up. I mentioned 4-pin Molex to SATA power cable earlier and you need this, or rather just a SATA power source in general as powering 7 USB 3.0 ports isn't an easy task and the card needs an extra bit of power to do so. If you're here watching this video, you probably don't need a lesson on how to install one of these, but in case you have amnesia or just like hearing me talk about stuff, here it is. Step 1. Find an empty PCI Express slot. Step 2. Stick USB card into said empty slot. Step 3. Stick SATA power cable into card. Now this is a review after all and I'm not content with just testing if it works and powers on. No, I want to see if I can break it or at least bring it down to its knees, so I'll be hooking in 7 devices simultaneously and seeing what happens when we start operations on them at the same time. Booting into Windows, we first check and make sure that everything that we hooked in is recognized by Windows, and just as expected, we have all 7 here. We need baseline numbers first, however, so what I'm doing here is getting a baseline reading for each device to see what numbers we get out of it. Transferring an anime episode into my USB 3.0 Samsung USB stick took about 25 seconds, which is a good number for a 935 megabyte file. We're going to launch 6 instances of Crystal Disk Mark now and benchmark each drive to see how fast their sequential read and writes are. As you can see, Drive G gives us a number of 94 megabytes per second of read and near 80 megabytes per second of write, which makes it exactly in line with the speed at which my SD card in my SD card reader is capable of. Let's get to the remaining numbers. Now that we've got all of that, let's see what happens when I try to transfer a file onto drive F and benchmark the remaining 6 USB drives simultaneously. As you can see, there is a bit of performance hit on the drives, but it's still within acceptable levels, I believe. The file transfer now took 39 seconds instead of 25. My SD card reports about 10 to 15 megabytes less in transfer speeds, and the others also reported lower numbers. Now this kind of use case scenario will never happen to you, because rarely do people really do transfer stuff to 7 drives at the same time. But as we can see, the Oracle card handles the load quite well, despite some lower numbers. We didn't see any transfer problems like devices being unplugged or being cut off, or the card dying altogether from all that transferring. So there it is, if you find yourself needing more USB ports for devices like myself, then I think this guy right here 
is for you. Sure, it's not USB Type-C or 3.1 Gen 2 or whatever, but for what it's worth, they're still USB 3.0 and not 2.0, so they're by all means not slow and USB 3.1 Gen 2 has yet to become ubiquitous. Maybe in a few more years. You get a nice black PCB and a black bracket instead of crappy colours that stick out and honestly, black goes well with anything. Full transfer speeds as advertised, a nice clean look and not skipping a heartbeat even when put through its paces makes it easy to give this product the recommended award. This guy sells for about 20 US dollars now on Amazon and if you would like to get one, I've got a link for you down in the description below that sends a small kickback my way. You won't pay any extra and it helps keep these videos coming. If you like this video, drop it a like, share it along and if you disliked it, well, drop a dislike, maybe drop me a comment on what you'd like to see improved. Also, if you have a suggestion or product that you'd like to see reviewed, drop me a comment in the comment section below. Yeah, that's correct. My name is Yang aka Tech Rodent and rejoice! It's a Friday guys. <laughs>